Well, I've had a lovely morning so far. I've been in the attic and um, ratching around and I found a treasure trove. I found two boxes from when I used to run the Appleby Young Embroiderers with a couple of friends and I found all sorts of things that I was trying to get rid of then. So I'm thrilled that um, I've got some lovely river silks and um, variegated threads that I would never normally use on crew work because that's instantly going to be a name for somebody. So Richard, if you can move a little bit further towards you, I'm going to just show you and see uh, what choices we're going to make because the, uh, the this one's going to be for Sienna and she is not yet too. So I feel she's really entering a very pink phase. So she's going to have to have something quite um, young. So perhaps that will be a bit of fun. And to go with it, I'm going to put some brightly coloured beads and hopefully if she swallows those, they're small enough just to go straight through. <laughs> so, <laughs> <awesome>. <laughs> Of glitter, sorry, Richard. <laughs> I know you've never really got used to me, have you? <laughs> um, and some silver would look rather gorgeous with that pink, but you know, anything you just chuck it in at children and they love it. And there's some more silver there. So, um, I've got a few embellishments, I've got some little I don't know what quite those are, I think they're for making necklaces, but again, some um, beautiful beads. So I could use some beads on this rather plain one um, to make the couching look uh, a little livelier. Um, I thought of, again, of putting some silver beads in this one in the middle of the of the uh, snow. But um, the one thing I found that I really am filled with is this is a coral necklace. It's real coral and I don't know where it's come from. You know, if the house had burnt down, I would never know, I'd never remember I had it. But in stump work and in many embroideries made um, in the 17th century, they put in a little bit of coral. It was incredibly expensive and very exotic. And it was meant to ward off plague or germs or anything threatening the child ward off evil so i think you know that's a really uh, powerful thing so i'm going to stitch in some coral in a slightly invisible way um uh if you move across to this one richard <laughs> okay here I, I should really have a, have a sign we should have a sort of um a strange noise we make <laughs> to move um and now i'm just looking at the colors that might go into this rather icy one i think that's a rather strange blue i'm not so keen on that but I quite like it to be a little bit more Christmassy. So, um, you know, I'm just trying out uh, colours. So you just don't choose colours away from the thing you're going to stitch. Don't choose it against the white tablecloth, as I've mentioned before. I don't really like that. What do you think? That was the mane and tail. You don't like that, do you, Richard? <laughs> you're too tasteful by half. This is for a child. <laughs> That's rather gorgeous. A bit of silkiness. Um, don't forget that, you know, the minute this child receives this gift, no doubt she will actually cut the mane and tail because that's the first thing all children do. Um, that's rather lovely as well. So I'm going to make a pretty full on uh, mane and tail with some sparkle in and maybe some silver in the tail. What do you think of that? That's fine. <laughs> you just think, would you just get on with it, woman? <laughs> and finish these. Um, that's wire, so that's that's probably not a good idea. You you will make the decision that you are going to do. <laughs> I have learned this. I know. I'm going to. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, and then I'll change yeah. my mind. Yeah. And that, I think that's gorgeous. What about that? Going along the top of the hammock or something like that. It's an idea. These these blues, I can just tip them out and just put those amongst the sky. Look, what about, that's lovely, isn't it? You've got to say yes, Richard. Yes, that's your job. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, and these gorgeous things, look at those. Not on this one though, perhaps, although it goes with the pinkiness down here. Maybe make little flowers. Anyway, I'm gonna get my needle out, get a piece of thread and start stitching and just know that all these beads and this mane and tail will no doubt be snipped out by a child, but let's, you know, let them have a bit of fun. So whilst Richard and, the, and Hermione finish off the weeding, and expose the Victorian cobbled back lane that we found going down the back of our house. I have been adding a little bit of bling to the first of the blinged up stockings. So all this needs now is the mane and tail and of course making up. But 
I'm rather pleased. What do you think? So I've added just some um, little pretend pearls and uh, plastic beads, which have got a metal coating that I found. And I just added the uh, silver ones at the top where I thought it was looking a bit dull, left the cloud alone, added um, silver and the pearls in the middle section, and then uh, added a few little casting on stitches on the bottom on his rump and um, added some of the random little uh, pearls and rather fluorescent shiny beads wherever I could find them and ended with the silver thread going over the end of the hooves. The thread I've used for the beads and for just putting the extra detail on has been the Ophir um, thread by Coates Patons and uh, I just happen to have a lovely roll of it and it's one of my favourite metal threads. So there we go, I'll be back with the next stocking.